So welcome to video number three, in which we're going to look at uh, life on land in the Precambrian. So if we want to think about life on land, it makes sense to think about when we had land from. We certainly know that continental crust, this is a, a crust that's defined by the kind of rock we find in it. If you want more details, ask in the uh, Zoom session. We know that this form of crust started to form by at least 4.2 billion years ago, but initially that was submerged. It was under the ocean. We also know that it emerged above sea level somewhere towards the end of the Archean period. Um, we know that it was there um, by the great oxygenation event, and this is a uh, because this is marked by the widespread appearance of what we call mature sediments in the early Proterozoics. These are sediments that we know would have been weathered on land. So definitely by 2.5 billion years ago, but there is some evidence for um, land-based sandstones appearing at 3.2 billion years ago in some rocks in South Africa. What I can also tell you is that um, most books, most textbooks will tell you that until 420 million years ago, there was no life on land. Now that's not really true, actually. Um, for example, by 2.7 billion years ago, we have evidence for the survival of cyanobacteria, an important group of organisms, um, in exposed intertidal and even lacustrine settings. And so we know that cyanobacteria had adapted to the higher UV flux that must have existed before the great oxygenation event. Oxygen helps um, overcome some of the impacts of UV light. Um, and we know that this occurred before that oxygen. And so by inference, we can say it's probable that there were cyanobacteria on um, exposed land surfaces at well, at well, as well, um, somewhere um, before 2.7 billion years ago. I think it's really interesting, actually. We don't really have time to discuss this in depth, Feel free to ask me about it in the Zoom session. Um, the phylogenomic kind of molecular clock studies suggest an archaean origin for, some back, for cyanobacteria. And some lines of evidence point towards that happening in freshwater rather than in the oceans. So that's a really important observation for some important groups. So we're looking at a, a situation where we can say that definitely by this period here, by 2.5 billion years ago, we think there was there were, were organisms surviving on land. By 1.1 billion years ago, we know that a large single continental body had a mass. I mentioned this in the last lecture, it's called Rodinia, and it is roughly equatorial at this time. And we have evidence for some life on land during this time period um, which is largely ignored by many books and indeed um, many of the papers that we write about life on land tends to focus on animals so it doesn't really focus on these really interesting examples of early land-based life. Those examples include fossils from a non-marine sequence of rocks found in modern-day northwestern Scotland called the Torridonian rocks. A member of the Torridonian succession called the Store Group has actually been radiometrically dated at 1.2 billion years of age. There are a number of lines of evidence within the fossils from this um, group of rocks for terrestrial life. And indeed, the earliest unequivocal reports of terrestrial aquatic microbial fossils, so microbes in fresh water, um, has been published from this 1.2 billion year old store group. Although that the terrestrial nature of these fossils was not emphasized at the point at which they were first published in um, well, the first published examples of these actually get date all the way back to the early 1900s. And indeed, a diverse assemblage of dispersed um, fossils uh, of a type called the polynomorphs. I've put a definition of that on this slide for you here. This is a microfossil between five and 500 microns in size, size sorry, made from an organic substance that is highly resistant to chemical attack. Um, so a, a diverse assemblage of such fossils has now been recovered from throughout the Torridon group, which dates between 1.2 and 1 billion years in age. And examples of these fossils are shown here, that you can see their clusters of cells, and reported um, identities of cells and fossils such as these from the Torridon include cyanobacteria, blue-green algae, and uh, they include a kind of aloxanous elements, so these are elements that have been moved from elsewhere, that um, indicates that these were periodic, periodically exposed microbial mats. So at times they actually dried out 
which is really quite exciting. Another really good example of a Proterozoic rock with early evidence for life on land is the Nonsuch Shale, a rock that outcrops in Michigan and Wisconsin in the USA. This has been aged using a rhenium osmium dating system to about to just over 1 billion years old, and we know based on its sedimentology that it represents an ancient lake deposit. More specifically, we can say that the structures in this are stromatolites, which probably grew in ponds that occupied abandoned channels on the surface of alluvial fans. So these are kind of um, lacustrine uh, and fluvial type environments. Um, very early on um, in terms of the evidence that we really have in terms of fossils for life on land. We've recovered a wide range of microfossils through acid maceration of these shales, that's dissolving shales and then looking at the scraps of um, acid resistant material, again polynomorphs, that you can see on this slide here that are left when you do that. And these fossils provide us with direct evidence of what kind of organisms inhabited the waters and the shoreline of this nonsuch lake system. Indeed, there are, as, there are as many as 50 different species that have been uh, described from this particular rock. There are a number of morphologies amongst those species that is of note in this early terrestrial as assemblage. So those, those features of note include a large cell size, and some of these structures actually have pseudo-branching or uh, a modular construction. However, there is little evidence in the fossils, and you can see a, a series of examples of these fossils on this slide here, for complex multicellularity. Overall, the evidence suggests that multicellularity in eukaryotes on land had not proceeded beyond simple serial filaments, such as this example shown here, and this one here, um, at this point in the history of life on land. So to conclude, unicellular organisms formed a biomass rich cover um, with mature soils from relatively early on, earlier than we may think, in the history of Earth. And these were the same environments that ultimately plant dominated ecosystems would later evolve. All of that is nicely summed up by this um, diagram that I, I took from a Baraldi Campisi paper in 2013. However, after those um, one billion year old rocks that I've mentioned, there are extremely few non-marine deposits recognized. And so we have a big gap between this point and where we start our next video, which is once we're in the Phanerozoic, looking at the first evidence for more complex life on land.